Welcome everybody to this workshop. We are going to be talking about taming wild obstacles. And that is a way to redirect our energy. And I'm very happy that you are all here, that you have made this as a priority. Some of you are very experienced meditators. Some are new to the path of meditation. So it's nice. And let's get started. So that was the first obstacle that you have overcome today, that you have come to the workshop. And uh, to come to this workshop, you have transcended barrier or barriers of space because we are in different space. I'm somewhere in New York, you are somewhere across the world. So we have transcended that barrier of space. And uh, let's say also time because for some of you, it may be very early in the morning, you would never attend a workshop at this time, but as it is online and you are in the comfort of your home, then you don't mind. And uh, person, because we are different people here and uh, from different backgrounds and different uh, locations and we all come together in this online space. And everything was made possible by another obstacle, which is the present situation in the world. Because we are facing this obstacle that we cannot travel so much, we cannot go out so much. So many of us have decided to go in the internet and learn and interact. And we have also faced a barrier of the technology, another obstacle that we have overcome. So this program is an example of how obstacles can work in our favor. In fact, life is an obstacle course. We will go from one obstacle to another. When we overcome one obstacle, then we face another one. And if we overcome the next one, then there is another obstacle. So we go from one obstacle to another. So I have a question to you. Are you facing some obstacle in your life now? You have to use the menti.com, the link that has been shared before. Let's see if we share it again to you. And you click on that link and you will be able to vote. And uh, say yes or no, or maybe you are not facing anything just now, but you were facing something recently. So I'll give you some moments to do that. Okay, I think we have about 50% of the people. More people can make effort to use the Mentimeter, you will be able to participate more. If you have a second device, like a cell phone and you are using the computer, you can 
put uh, menti.com in the cell phone and uh, use the code, and then you have a separate device to do the interaction. Okay, so now, it seems that most of you are facing some obstacle, which makes the workshop quite relevant. And I'm facing one obstacle is that some people are drawing on the screen and uh, that is uh, disturbing the presentation. Okay, so let's go. First, I want to establish why obstacles are important. So for that, I'm going to use a physical example. So the physical example is like this. I want to become strong. So I want to build up my muscles. So I do exercise, means I will move my arm doing an exercise so that my muscle will become strong, okay? So I can do it, but what happens if I use obstacles? If I use obstacles, okay, just a moment, something. I get better results. I use a weight. A weight will give me more strength and uh, I will get better results. Now, after, suppose I put five pounds, I start with five pounds. And after some time, my muscles are stronger so I can go to 10. So I increase the obstacle. And then if 10 becomes not enough, I go to 15 or 20. And in that way, the, the greater the obstacle, the better result I get, but it goes in a gradual way. So I will give you some philosophical background. The philosophy says obstacles are the helping forces that establish you or one in the goal. This philosophical quotation is taken from the book Ananda Sutram from Sri Sri Ananda Murti. And he gave it in Sanskrit, but I have given you the translation. Obstacles are the helping forces that establish one in the goal. So obstacles are not our enemies. They are our friends. So I will read again, and this is mostly the words from Sri Sri Anandamurti. Obstacles, in fact, are no foes on the path, but indeed friends. They only do service to a person. It is on account of these obstacles that one rages a battle against them. This counter effort alone carries the individual to his or her cherished goal. When you face an obstacle, you have to make extra effort to overcome it. You have to 
fight against it. In that, you get strength, physical, mental, spiritual, and then you progress. So that, that's the idea or the goal of obstacles. So before I asked you, if you are facing any obstacle, now I would like you to write down the obstacle that you are facing. And this is uh, anonymous, so you can be feel free to write it. It will not be connected to your name. So you can write down an obstacle you are facing now. If you have any difficulty to write in the in the Mentimeter, you can also write in the chat. But I think many of you have managed to use the Mentimeter. All right, so I'm getting a few answers. Get the discipline to wake up early. Self-discipline, clash with a colleague, moving. It is hard to get to know new people. Changing all meanings of life. Sleepy, but would you like to continue with the course? Or oh, that's a very immediate uh, obstacle. How others are deciding to handle the global crisis, COVID, global warming, indiscipline, finances, too many things to do within 24 hours, skin issues, be overwhelmed by social media, news, technologies, so many things to do in a short time. Relationship, not sure to let go or fight for the relationship. Too big project with too many people to manage well. Yes, okay. So let's keep it all these difficulties parked here for a moment and let's go into this one. Now let's do a visualization exercise. The problems we had, we have at the moment, we wrote them down, leave them there. Now what you can do is think about an obstacle that you have already overcome in your life. You can either close your eyes or with the eyes open. You can think about something that you have already overcome. And, but at that time, it used to be something very big, something that you thought it will remain forever, that you will not be able to overcome. But today, you have even forgotten that it ever existed. I will share with you one from my side. When I finished my training to become a monk, I did my training in India. And the conditions in India that many years ago were not very good, the hygienic conditions. And I got very sick in India. And I stayed there for, let's say, seven, eight months. And I got sick when I arrived. And uh, I am thin. I'm not a fat person. But that time I, I became really thin. I was 
my weight was about 42 kilos or 90 pounds. And after my training, I went to Africa and uh, the conditions were much better, but I did not get any better for many months. And I thought that I will never overcome this health problem. And I was already thinking that I will be always like this. And uh, then I, by chance, I met a doctor. And this doctor looked at me and said, Dada, you seem very sick. I said, yes. Then he said, I think I can cure you. I can find the cause and give you some medicine. And I went to him. He worked in a big hospital. And I, I went to that hospital and he did all the tests and he prescribed me some medicines. And immediately I took it, it I became better. It was like almost immediately. So I started gaining weight and gaining weight and everything became better. Just after being like that for more than a year, it changed. So I even forgot that I went through all that. You know, so I want you also to feel that you had some obstacle in your life that you were fighting, 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 and then it finished. And you now forgot about it. So we go back to the present obstacle that you are facing and that you have written here. And it seems like huge, but keep in mind that whatever you wrote here that seems very difficult, it will also go and you will forget about it. So that is the nature of life. So let's move forward then. A little bit of theory. There are different types of obstacles in our movement. They can be physical, physical, psychic, psychic, psycho-spiritual, and purely spiritual. That is taken in consideration that we are moving and we are moving towards a spiritual goal, a higher goal, that our goal in life is not only physical. Our goal in life is something deeper. So we are moving in the physical plane, we are moving in the psychic plane, and we are moving in the spiritual plane. If there is movement, there is friction, there is opposition. So in physical level, now I want you to participate a little bit. We can face various obstacles in physical level. So, in this Mentimeter slide, I'm facing physical obstacles related to, to the weather, to the food, clothing, housing, medical, education. So you can strongly disagree. So you keep the 
slider on the left side, or you agree that you are facing that kind of obstacle, so you move it to the right. So you can choose the degree that you are facing of that particular object or obstacle. So the, this participation in the Mentimeter also helps one obstacle is that one that somebody is sleepy but wants to continue. So you have to be looking into the Mentimeter and back so it keeps you awake and concentrated. So let's see. Some people are facing uh, mostly weather or mostly food regarding food and regarding a little bit medical and the climate. Yeah, we are all facing problems with the climate. It seems uh, clothing is not much problem, it seems, for us. But food and medical a little bit. So health and uh, food, which are also very related. You know, if our food is good, our health is better, there is some relationship. Okay. So we are not facing so much physical object, uh, physical obstacles, because human beings, we are more mental beings. So let's move forward here. Uh, we got 23 people who answered. We are 57 present. So let's optimistically around 50%. And uh, what about psychic objects? So I put some statements there. One statement is that animals face obstacle with brute force. That's the top one. Means animals usually face physical objects and they use their physical force to overcome. So if you think that is true, you put a strongly agree, and otherwise strongly disagree. Then we go to humans. Humans, we contemplate deeply. And so we don't just go to the object physically, we contemplate deeply. So that also, that was number two. And then number three, that humans, we can invent ways to solve problems with our intellect. And that was number three. And number four, we humans, can be influenced by our neighbors, our family, our teachers. That is the yellow one, the number four. And the green one, number five, it is difficult to free ourselves from this influence. And the last one, number six, even educated, mature persons can have difficulties to overcome the influence of our neighbors, family, and teachers. That's the last one. Okay, I give you some time because some people also are needing the translation. So we'll and we'll see what's happening here. The tendency that I see is that you agree with all of these statements. 
in a one degree or another. So that's, uh, I know that many of you are facing the obstacle of language, but maybe this also will inspire you to learn another language, which is very useful. Okay, so I see here from the answers that I got that you agree that animals are more on the physical side, they, but humans, we are more on the psychic. Looking at the answers from the previous slide that not many of you are facing all those physical obstacles, but you are agreeing that these mental obstacles are there. Sometimes we think that we are taking our own decision, but we were influenced by our parents, by our friends, by our teachers, by our environment. And they create limitations. You want to meditate and your family is telling, oh, you are wasting your time. What are you doing? You want to be vegetarian, but the people are telling, if you become vegetarian, you become weak you not have strength. So many ideas are coming from other people and it's limiting our mental expansion. All right, so let's move forward. Here, I'm just asking if you agree. I put a few statements there. Number one. Okay, let me, uh, let's see, let's do like this. Everybody goes to the Mentimeter now. So all you in different languages, and then I will read one and pause and the translators can do the translation, and then you do the answer. So number one is, do you agree that offers or prayers to the gods can help you in your life? If you agree, you move the thing to the right. If you don't, leave it in the left. The next one, do you agree that pilgrimages to holy places help in the spiritual life? If you agree, you move to the right. If you disagree, left. Number three, bathing in the holy river or going to the holy mountain are elevating experiences. Same, agree, right. Disagree, left. And number four, tax breaks and benefits for corporations and the wealthy will trickle down to everyone else. That means that if we give more money to the rich people, eventually it will uh, come to the poor also. So, so let's see what's happening here. It seems that some of you agree that if we pray to the gods, they can help us. 
And also some of you agree that if we go to holy places, it will also be good. And you also agree in that if you bathe in the holy river, it will be beneficial. But nobody is agreeing with the economic thing. It, it means economically, you have a good um, understanding. But on the other level, I want to forward to follow up with this picture that you will see next. Okay, so here is what's going on on this one and this. Okay, so it could be that the Okay, somebody saying that is telling that the economic is more measurable. Okay, it could be that uh, the economy you can measure better. But let, let's analyze this spiritual thing because this is very important. Um, I will forward, show you another a picture here. Okay, suppose that if you bathe in the holy river, it will be helpful to you. So these are the fish in the holy river. They're all saints because they are bathing there all the time. So what I want to say is that these ideas are not very rational. They are limiting our mind. I will go back. If you offer, make offers to the gods, that it will not help anybody because if we think that God wants the best for everyone. So why we need to ask or to offer something? And if God has everything, what can we offer? So in the past, people we used to burn the ghee, like clarified butter, they used to burn it so it makes the smoke and then it creates clouds and it will rain. That was due to limitation of the intellect. They didn't understand how things work. So that was a psychic obstacle. So in the same way, there are many psychic obstacles in the field of spirituality. If you think that Spirituality is everywhere. God is everywhere. So why he will be more in one place than in another one? Maybe you perceive it better in one place than in the other one, but it doesn't mean that that's the fact. So I put this to call your attention for many limiting ideas that have been put in our mind through education, through environment, through friends, through family, and that is limiting our spiritual advancement. So these are called dogma. Dogma are ideas that are not rational, don't make sense, and limit our development. And I will put a quote here that in the psycho-spiritual sphere, the greatest obstacle is dogma. 
So we have to be very aware that we apply our free mind without dogma to spirituality. Otherwise, our spiritual movement is slow. Okay, so when here is again in the Holy River, and uh, we'll talk about spiritual obstacles. So that was psycho-spiritual. It is blocking you to reach even to a spiritual level. Now in the spiritual level, it is the final obstacle. And then I'm asking the question, or I'm putting the statement, if you agree or disagree. All spiritual scriptures agree amongst themselves. The final goal of spirituality is one. So if you agree, you move it all to the right. If you disagree, you move to left, okay? So it seems that most people agree that the final goal of spirituality is one, and mostly disagree that all spiritual scriptures agree. Actually, they don't agree. M most of the spiritual scriptures have disagreements. But the goal is one. So someone may be wrong. It's like you come and there are four or five uh, roads, and all of them say road to New York. And one is going north, one is going south, one is going east, one is going west. So something is wrong. And we are the ones that need to find out. We need to find the right road. And that's a spiritual obstacle. To succeed against the spiritual obstacles. OK, wait. It is needed a collective effort. Sometimes we think that it's just something personal for me, but it's not, it's something collective. The entire humanity needs to embrace spirituality. If we are today looking at humanity, we are very materialistic in general. So it's very difficult to develop spiritually. But if the society is more spiritual, it pushes you. I will not do this one, I will do this one. So here is one quote. Difficulties can never be greater than, than your capacity to solve them. Do you agree? There is a, okay, it seems that most people are going to the yes. Let's wait a little bit to get more, more votes. We have 10, three and four. Okay, it's getting interesting. 12, three and five, seven, wow. Maybe it's powerful, but yes is winning. Yes. Okay, so it seems that most of you agree with this quote. Three of you don't agree and seven are in the maybe. This is another quote from Sri Sri Murti. He says that difficulties can never be greater than your capacity to overcome them or to solve them. 
And uh, with that, we want to go to another exercise. We want you to go to some breakout rooms with a group and you have a conversation. And amongst you, you choose somebody to represent the group, to put the ideas together, to present it back to us. And the question is, or the theme of the discussion is, if you have this idea or this feeling inside you that you have the capacity to overcome obstacles, how does it change your life? Okay, so if you have this feeling with you, how does it change your life? And uh, Jai, are we ready with the groups? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And uh, you will see a breakout room icon in your Zoom where you can click and you will be able to choose a room to go. And the rooms will be by language. So if you speak, if you speak English, you have some choices of English rooms. But suppose you only speak Vietnamese, then you go to a Vietnamese room. Or you only speak Spanish, then you go to a Spanish room. Okay, so, okay, Jai, you can open. You will have eight or nine minutes for this uh, discussion. So just share in the group what difference it makes for you to feel that Yes, I can overcome any obstacle in my life. Okay. We rooms are open. Yeah, rooms are open. We will also move you to different rooms according to the language we think that you speak. And that are the leaders of the group also? Uh, excuse me? Uh, read in the chat. Oh, the group should choose a leader to share the highlights. Yes, they will choose among themselves.
So, Jai, how many minutes we have left? Is the three that I, I see here? Uh, there's just a few minutes left. Okay. Yeah, I think I visited all the rooms. They are all engaged in discussion. So I think we are all back here to the main room.
and I hope you had a nice discussion. And I hope you remembered to choose somebody from your room to give us some report. But in any case, I'm going to give anybody the possibility of writing something in the Mentimeter. And the others, uh, if somebody has something prepared to share, you can uh, unmute, activate your microphone, and you can also, also speak. And uh, the Mentimeter is there that you can write something interesting that you learned in this group discussion, or even something interesting that you shared and you felt, oh, because by sharing, it came to the surface of yourself. So anything interesting that you got from this discussion. And uh, so anybody from any group wants to share? English groups, we had a few English groups there. Let's see, the first, uh, the English one was the, the group with Gauri and Monica and Tyrone and Phyllis, Ellen, Andre. Anybody from your group who wants to share? Well, I kind of facilitated. So, Tarun, are you going to? Go ahead. OK, I thought somebody else. Um, people were a little bit quiet in our group, so they were listening and being, being um, thoughtful. Um, a couple of things that came up was that this, um, this concept is a really great mindset to move through the world with, because um, even if you are, you know, um, faced with a really, really a uh, huge obstacle, like like a disease, let's say, it, it's how you approach it and you don't give up, you know? So maybe, maybe at the end, you do pass away from cancer, let's say, but what was the quality of your life leading up to that? Like, did you choose to be happy? Um, you know, did you choose to live life to the fullest up to that? So it, it may be the actual outcome isn't what we want, but it's it's how we change how we change in re, in regards to that obstacle, and then the, the, the concept of being aware of and, and dropping um, expectations that things should or shouldn't be a certain way um, helps you helps you in life. Thank you very much for that. And uh, anybody else? from another group, the group English 2 was the group with Dada, Nabanila, Nanda, Caroline. And Krishna Prem and Tara Devi. And Pratik. And Pratik Kumar, okay. But I think he is, he is not in the meeting again. So anybody from that group wants to share something? I can share Dada. Sure. <clears throat> Overall, we uh, discussed that the made us feel very positive. Um, we did discuss a little bit that some of us were on a different, different uh, places in our journey. And uh, that there's, uh, for some, it was like, there's no shortcut, that it's kind of like a stepping stone. And also it um, emp empowered us and gave us a stronger, more positive mindset. And then also Dada brought up with a very good point. He said that it also, he felt like he, when facing obstacles, sometimes he knew that he was kind of on the, doing something correct in the right path because he was receiving help from unexpected sources. So I thought that was really valuable. So it was a, it was a very nice discussion. Thank, Thank you. you. And the English tree, Shiva, Raquel, Virabhadra, Vilda, Will do. 
Anybody from that group? Even if you were not designated, if you want to share something. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and share. Sure. Namaskar everyone. Um, based on our discussion, uh, for the most part, I think we generally agreed that obstacles basically can actually be our friends because what it actually does is that it helps us in order to grow. And usually if we look at it from like a personal perspective, like, you know, each of us have always had to overcome challenges and how we overcome these challenges or these obstacles is what really helps us to grow. However, when we look at challenges on a global level, like something like climate change, we might feel that it's gonna be impossible for us to solve it. But if say on a personal or community level, we were to you know, make small changes, then over time in the long run, we do overcome those obstacles. So I think what we, the main takeaway, even though we are aware that there are some obstacles that we might not be able to resolve, whether it is individually or right now, in general, if we look at it from a personal perspective, obstacles are never usually greater than our capacity to overcome them. Because once we've been through a few, there's this hopefulness, there's this willingness to remain positive that it is possible. And so that's the essence of what we discussed in our group. Great, thank you very much. And uh, from the Vietnamese group, Anybody who speaks English who would like to share, or you can write on the chat. I, um, I just uh, I just want to say something. Yes. I would like to share my idea. I think um, I think that we can find some um, uh, some same idea from all the um, the concept that you um, just share, uh, we, um, we have the same idea about um, that we, if we believe in ourselves, that we can um, overcome the difficulty and um, make things happen. And we believe in our um, spiritual um, that when um, that when uh, give us the power to uh, overcome and um, and uh, to overcome the difficulties and um, uh, more than that I think that um, if we, we we can see we can face up the difficulty like a challenge from the earth that um, that we believe that on the way we go uh, with our belief that we can receive we can receive the help from uh, from from someone or receive the help from yourself that can help you to um, resolve the, the problem. So I think the main thing is the power is right into your right in yourself. So you just have to to work it up and look at it with a positive way that can help you to um, to make life better. Great. Yeah, I think that is uh, some idea that we would like to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the Spanish group, is anybody on the Spanish group which would like to share? Okay, let me read what's here on the discussion on the screen. I'm good at inventing non-existent obstacles with my own brain. <laughs> okay. Yes, that may be something we need to 
be able to overcome another obstacle that we have to overcome. The next one, to be aware of and let go of expectations of how things should be. Yes, maybe it should be in a different way. We have to be able to learn from it. Aprendimos que o ego obstrui la razón. We learn that ego obstructs the mind or the reasoning. <clears throat> yes. I need to trust more that if my intention is good, help will come sometimes in unexpected ways. So this idea, many people have shared, it seems. Uh, Donna, sorry to interrupt. I don't, I only see a white screen. Oh, really? Okay, let me do it again. Yeah. Let me share again. What about the now? Yep. Good. Okay, thank you for that. So I'm reading here from, I read the first one and the second one, third, fourth, I'm in the fifth, that we can overcome obstacles if we don't put the expectation. So this is another idea that came from us. One is that we receive help from unexpected ways. The other one is about expectations. You know, if, yes, if we have expectations, we may not see the real, we may not learn what we are supposed to learn. Even in meditation, you close your eyes and you're expecting that you are going to feel in a certain way and you feel in a different way. So you are missing the experience. Obstacles sometimes may be linkages, connecting people and pushing them to reach mutual goals together. Yes, obstacles may make you meet other people. Obstacles are friend and will help one to progress. Sometimes they cannot be overcome, neither can be avoided. They have to be faced and one is to be fit, best way to overcome them. Okay. So that's, uh, and the last one, enfrentar los obstáculos y descubrir que hemos podido superarlos llena de satisfacción to face an obstacle and discover that we overcome them will fill us with satisfaction. And to think that will help to face obstacles and uh, make them okay. And the last one here, remembering how, how we have overcome obstacles in the past, it equips us with the positivity and hopefulness that no obstacle is greater than our capacity to overcome them. All right. Uh, so now we have time for questions, but before the questions, let me just do a summary and then we go to the questions. What I wanted you to get from this workshop, one is that this philosophy of obstacles, that obstacles are there to help us. So this is a, a philosophy. We live according to our philosophy. So if we put in our philosophy that obstacles are there, they will help me. Your attitude in life changes. And then I talked about the different obstacles from physical to spiritual and the ways that we can overcome. And the main thing of the workshop is to give the frame of mind that if there is an obstacle, it means that it is something that I can solve. I can, I have the capacity to overcome it. So that was the main aspect. And so let's go to the questions here. If you have any questions at the moment, you can put there. And we are coming to the closing of our workshop for today. And I will, I don't see many questions. Maybe you are still adjusting to the, to the idea. 
as you think about questions, I will give to Krishna Prema. She can give the few last comments here. Okay, I leave here the questions open. And Krishna Prema, you had something to share about our future or not now? I can do that now while we wait for people to. Okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you for everyone. Um, please keep entering. If you do have some questions, please feel free to type them in. But we want to thank you guys for being here for our inaugural planetary workshop. Very happy. Um, I think, I, Dada, I want to thank you very much. It was a fantastic presentation. I know it was very valuable for me. Um, so next week, same time, Sunday at 1430, we will have Dada, Dada Namahanda Alanda, and he's going to be talking about the future of intelligence, technology in the age of tuition, intuition. So I think it's really going to be a fascinating, it's very relevant to our current situation, especially with the release of, Elon, if anybody knows who Elon Musk is, and his humanoid that's supposed to be coming out next year. So I think it's going to be really valuable and a great um, presentation next week. So we hope you'll join us. It is free. It is open. So please spread the word. And that also brings us to the global community. We talked a little bit about that in the beginning. Uh, the platform is open to everyone. We hope we'll see more of you there and definitely hope we'll see more of you interacting because that's how we learn from each other, just like we did in the breakout rooms and just our overall discussion today. We also have a, a calendar, a PLT calendar with different events that are occurring, including the planetary workshop and planetary meditation and our planetary yoga. So we have yoga on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and we um, have it in Spanish, English, and we're just very excited to be rolling out um, in Vietnamese. And uh, we also have a PLT YouTube channel. It is open to the public. You're welcome to check it out. All these, um, these uh, recordings will be there, and it's a great way to share with others as we are trying to spread the spread all over the continents. We want to fill that map up with people from all over the globe. And uh, we thank you guys for all being here. And uh, be I will pass it back to Dada to answer some questions. And thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> as you heard the announcements, you could write some questions. There are two here. One is how do obstacles relate to some scatters? Okay, this topic of samskaras may be known by some of you, may be not known by some others. So what is this samskara? In, in generally, people use the word karma. It's like your karma, so, or your destiny. So these obstacles, how are they related in that way? Uh, let's say, these, this karma or these samskaras, they are holding us. And uh, when we face obstacles, the idea is that these obstacles will help us to clear them out. So, so they are going to help to clear these, uh, your karma or your samskaras. And the third one, no, the second one, when going through challenges, we may have to make decisions. How can we be confident that our choices and decision was the best one? That's a very good question because our life is a series of decisions. We always have to make decision. And, uh, we can always develop better methods to make decisions. When I put uh, some statements there, one statement was that human beings, we have the capacity to contemplate and, and invent ways to solve problems, to face obstacles. So what do you do? You should always improve your method of 
making a decision. If you always decide by sentiment, it's like, oh, I look at this one, I look at that one, I think that's right, and I do it. That's not very methodical. We have an intellect that we can do an analysis of pros and cons, do a synthesis, see the big picture, decide if it's that beneficial for everyone. It's beneficial for us, it's beneficial for everyone. So it is the best way to go. So there are methods and for, to give the best reply to this, I need a, a workshop. So, but I will just let you with this idea that you have to apply a method to the decision-making. It cannot be instinctively. You don't just use the instinct of this or that, and I decide this, and then I decide that. That will not lead us well. So develop a method that you apply your, let's say, mental capacity plus a deeper capacity. And plus, you always consider if your decision is for the benefit of the maximum number of beings and people and other beings, if it's for the welfare. Okay. so. With that, uh, if you want to know to go more on obstacles, we can uh, we will offer in the near future featured programs, special featured programs on the PLT that will help you overcome obstacles in life and become planetary leaders, which is what we need to make a better society, a better planet for us and everyone. So that's what I wanted to share today. And the announcements are done. I don't know if there is anything more, Krishna Prema, you can add. No. Yeah, I just want to, yeah, just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, like I said, thank you for coming to our inaugural planetary workshop. And this is just a start of many to come. And like Dada just said, well, you know, we're hoping, we're planning to go deeper and uh, create more content and share with you guys. And we're just very excited you were here to join us. And we wish you a beautiful week. And we hope to see you within the community this week and definitely back here on Saturday and Sunday next, uh, next weekend for our planetary meditation and our planetary workshop. So have a wonderful week. So much. So all the best and thank you everybody.